In this Maya tutorial, I'm going to go over the time slider settings in the animation workspace. To get to the animation workspace, you can click in the top right of your Maya window and click animation. If your screen doesn't look like this, just reset to the default settings. In this scene, I just have a sphere right in the middle. If I click on this sphere and press W for the move tool, I can move it back. And then you notice my translate X in my channel box changes. I'm on frame one, and if I right click translate X, I can key select it. I know I started at zero, so I can move forward to say frame 20, and then I can change this to zero, press enter, then right click and key selected. You'll now see I have a red line in the graph editor. If I click in the graph editor, I can press the A key to see all of the graph and keyframes that exist. This is all the animation I'm going to do for this because we're focusing on the settings. But you can see if I move my playhead back and forth, you can see these keyframes. One of the problems though, if I press the play button, you'll notice that the animation moves very fast the first time you use Maya. So we're gonna talk about the time slider settings so we can fix this and other problems. To get to the time slider settings, you can go to Windows Settings Preferences Preferences, or you can also click on the little gear icon in the lower right of the animation workspace. When we click that, we get into the time slider preferences. You can expand the window to see everything. At the top, we have the frame rate. You can choose between any frame rate you want. I'm gonna change it to 30 frames per second. And when you do that, since I had frames already in my animation, Maya will automatically change where those frames are to keep the same timing. If you don't want that to happen, I can click here, keep keys at current frames. That's up to you. You can also change the playback start and end as well as the animation start and end. You can do this down in the timeline as well. So this will be the duration of the animation from one to 250 frames. And the playback is smaller, as you can see on the bar at the bottom of the screen, one to 150. So you can change this in either place. You can choose grease pencil frames. Grease pencil is a setting where you can draw on a certain camera view and it puts in an image plane where you are so you can use it as reference and you can choose whether or not to see those in the timeline. Key ticks, and we can decide if we want to see those none at all or the active ones, just the ones in the channel box or smart so we can toggle back and forth. I'm gonna leave it at the default of active. We can also change the size so we can make these larger or smaller depending on what we're doing. And then the time display, we can decide if we wanna see frames, time code, especially if you're working with video files, and then time code on time marker and play range. So you can choose that down there as well. Next, you can sync the channel box to the timeline display or the graph editor. That means the same keyframes are gonna be shown here. So you can see the translate X in the channel box. And then down here in the timeline, I have translate X selected. Then you want the current time editor, likely you want to snap the whole frames, but if for some reason you want to be on fractional frames, you would do this. And auto snapping keys isn't a bad idea to turn on because then you'll snap keys, but sometimes when you're manipulating things, this can be annoying because you can't place it where you want. So you can turn that on and off. And then the tick span is how far the ticks uh, take up. Right now it's set at zero. And then this is the important section for making your playback work. If we look at playback, right now it says playback every frame. That's why it was going super fast. This is a very simple animation of a sphere moving back and forth. And so the computer can play that pretty quick. So if I choose 30 frame per second by one, it will play it at actual speed. So if I save that and then I press play, it's now gonna play it at the actual speed. And you notice that the timeline continues playing. So I can adjust this down to just frame 30. My animation is approximately 25 frames long and now it'll play up to frame 30 and then loop. So if I press play now, you can see how it's looping. We can also set the looping controls. We can have it oscillate. So this is oscillating back and forth. You see how the animation oscillates. So it's playing it forwards and backwards. This would be more obvious if I set this time settings to 25 and then we leave it on oscillate. 
we now have it moving back and forth a little bit different than if the actual animation was happening. And you can see that clearly on the timeline. So this can be really helpful if you're studying complex motion and just want to get it right. This is the normal continuous looping. So it loops from start to finish. And then you can have it just loop once which can be convenient because by default it will keep playing and maybe you just want to see the animation once and don't want to think about coming down here to press stop. So those are some nice options as well. Let's go back to the settings. Down here you could also have it play at double speed or half speed or you can completely customize it and have it for yourself. Uh, this next one is important because right now update view is only on active. So if it's only on active, I'll save this, and if I go up to my four viewports and I click play, notice it's only on the active one. Let's put this back to looping continuously. So it only plays here, where I don't see them on these other panels. Now, sometimes you don't want it to play on the other panels because of the memory and CPU usage, but for a simple animation like this, I may want to see it from different views. So I can click on this animation icon, and then I can change it to all, and then save. And then if I press play, now it's playing on all the panels. In this looping icon I was talking about before, I can either change it here or I can change it in the settings. So right now it's on continuous. If I click here, it'll go back to oscillate and you'll notice that changes here as well. So there's always multiple places to change the settings on your animation time slider to get what you need to be able to get your work done. Again, the most important setting, if you want it to play back at normal speed, make sure you select your frames per second times one rather than play every frame.